Well, hey, everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here, and although the calendar says it's spring, it sure as heck doesn't feel like it right now because it's snowing here in filthy Cleveland. But welcome to season three of the new bike build series, and if you're not familiar, this is where we're taking a 2018 red and white BMW S1000 RR that I purchased from my good friends here at Sills BMW. And with the help of our amazing channel sponsors, we're going to install some beautiful custom parts into the motorcycle. And then after that, we'll make this bike available for everyone viewing this video for just $1. Information on how you can win this motorcycle is in the description. But for right now, I'm going to step inside in the warmth here and talk to Zach and see what we're going to do to this motorcycle today. Oh. But I'm locked out, so I'm going to have to go to the back door. So stay tuned. We are back. And we have yet another color variant of the S1000 <laughs> yes. Double R. Yes. That we are going to add some very special parts to, different stuff that we had before. Mm -hmm. uh, last bike kind of went power route. This one we're still going to do power modifications for sure. But uh, got a lot of cosmetics. This should be another great looker when it's done. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, we're going to look into braking performance, steering performance. We're going to look into those aspects. So since we're doing braking and steering and dynamics like that, we have the BST carbon fiber wheels that we've been teasing forever. Oh, wow. We're finally getting mounted up today. We're going to install some awesome Brembo street and race rotors. And we have the Pro Tie fully forged titanium rotor bolt kit. And also from Brox, we have a set of semi-ceramic bearings. Ooh, nice. Which means the balls inside this sealed bearing are made out of ceramic, which has less resistance than steel on steel. Okay. So it should spin longer and easier. It should take away any. It should take away some rolling resistance, which is like what the chain does. Okay. So maybe it doesn't show up as a horsepower gain. Maybe it does, but it should spool up quicker. So okay. you should feel it while you're riding. Yeah. Uh, we're going to show today, we're going to weigh the two wheels so we can get a difference and we'll show how to install the ceramic bearings and then we'll do a quick measurement test with the stock wheel with the stock bearings and then the carbon fiber wheel. Oh, we can do the carbon fiber wheel with and without the ceramic bearings. Okay. We'll set something up like that. But uh, first we have uh, Bridgestone back with us so I think we're going to put yes, some we do. Bridgestone tires on this BST wheel so let me grab that. We can put the tire on the wheel first. Sweet. Yeah, Bridgestone sent us a nice brand new set of RS10 tires we're going to install on this bike. So thanks and shout out to my good buddy Kevin from Bridgestone. The RS10s are what I use on my street bikes. And uh, they are awesome. Handle great in the rain. Handle great in the twisties as well. All right, so we got our BST wheel out of the box. First thing you want to do when you get these, they are packaged real nicely as you can see, but mistakes happen, shippers and shipping rough. Pull that foam off, and we're going to take a good look and inspect the wheel just to make sure that there is no imperfection, especially if you're taking it to a shop to have them mount the tires. You want to know that there was nothing there before. I've seen them before with an odd little blemish in the clear coat, and just that way you could let the guy mounting your tire, or you know that that was there and that didn't happen. Yep. Because you don't want to see any cracks or anything forming in this, but it's just a perfect finish. They do a really good job. I don't see anything. And since we are going to be changing these wheel bearings while I'm mounting up the tire, I'm going to put the new bearings into the freezer because oh. when you freeze metal, it contracts and gets a little bit smaller, like thousandths of an inch. Yeah. And we're going to heat this because that, when you heat metal, it gets a little bit bigger, like thousandths of an inch. So that way we, will, we can put these bearings in without using any force or contact because you don't want to put any force on it. It should drop right in there. Awesome so, tip. Uh, yeah generally about half hour hour in the freezer so by the time we're ready to do it these things should be ready to go this bike will be offered to you for a dollar correct so yes you'll get this uh, BST sheet that tells you exactly when the wheels were made what kind of bearings were in them although we're gonna switch it to that mm -hmm. uh, the serial numbers some notices about you might want to let your insurance company know if they're lighter how strong they are all that kind of stuff sweet mounting a tire on these isn't much different than a normal wheel want to be careful make sure your clamps are protected you can use normal force and everything so we're just going to match up there's an arrow on our tire that has direction right here 
and we actually need to flip that to the other side so that it's an arrow on this side. Oh, there we go. I don't know we were at the last time. See, I told you I'm terrible with that arrow. <laughs> so that arrow is going the same way as that arrow. Yep. We're going to put lots of rubber lube, tire lubricant on the sidewall. And then we got to be mindful of our 90 degree valve stem. See it's sticking up. You don't want to catch the bead on that and rip it. Yep. It actually needs to go up at about 11 o'clock position on your tire machine. got this nice plastic foot on our machine so that you can get it right up against the wheel and this tire I should be able to hopefully just spin on without even really having to spin the machine. Nope. Oh, almost. Be a little bit too stiff. No, I'm not going to cut it. Just not soft enough. A little bit chilly here today in Ohio. Yes. So we'll just let the machine do it. You can see it took very little effort. We got a nice big yellow dot on this tire, so we're going to try to have that align with the valve stem. And again, so we don't wind up pinching that bead, we need that at about... Um, is that? 7 o'clock or so position. really want to keep weight down. On the tire just so it doesn't create a big pinch point. See our dot stayed where we lined it up, so that's a good thing. Just aids in balancing. It's no big deal if it didn't line up. It's just this is supposedly the light spot of the tire. The ballast then weighs a little bit, so you might be able to use less weight. If it were somewhere else, no big deal. You can always make up for it. Now we just have to inflate the tire so that it'll seat onto the bead. It should come with two large snaps, just like a steel wheel. Want to hear some popping? Should get two nice pops out of it. There we go. Right. So we know it's seated on both sides. That's a good thing. And what tire, what air pressure are you going to use? Uh, we're going to use 36 psi. Okay. We got to reinstall our valve core because we removed it to help inflate the tire quickly. And this little tool also actually has a spring torque mesen mechanism built into it so it'll click once we get it to the right tightness. Oh, nice. So now you know it's not too tight, not too loose. I will set the tire pressure later with the digital gauge. But up next, we're going to change the... It? Well, we would, but we got to get the rotors on first. So gotcha. Next, we're going to change the wheel bearings. Lots of different kinds of snap ring players. Basically, just need one that'll fit. Watch your eyes. Yeah. And then, let's see if there's one on the other side. There isn't. Uh, we're going to want to look. No spacers, probably. So we'll know we're together when we can fit that snap ring back in. I'm going to heat this up a little bit with the heat gun. It yeah, gets about 80 degrees Celsius, and then it should knock right out. We have another set of tools that we use to get the wheel bearing out. So basically, comes with a tool that just fits inside this bearing and then we're going to hammer this piece into it and it's going to spread it out and make it real tight and wedge against the bearing and then we're going to be able to drive it out without touching the wheel or touching anything. Okay. Which is real important if you just had your wheels painted or with carbon fiber wheels. 
So we're just going to heat up this aluminum flange. Keep moving it. Try not to direct the heat directly at the carbon fiber. So as you can see, we're up to about 85 degrees Celsius, which is where this aluminum should start to expand. So that'll give us a couple seconds to flip this over. We insert this tool through and catch it in that slot. And then I'm going to take my hammer while it's on a hard surface. Jam it in there so it expands. And then we can move this. We're going to push this up. And we got our bearing out. Wow. Just like that, not too much force needed. Yes. This collar is going to come out also. And now we do the same thing to the other side. <laughs> now the other side can be a little bit easier because now that we got that bearing out, we can yes. see if we could just use a normal drift and punch it out. Yes. Oh. We're not reusing these bearings, so we could do it that way, I suppose. Wow. But we'll use this tool again. This off. Zach is teaching us something yet again. Awesome. <laughs> Remember we had a hit in there, so it's kind of stuck. Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to use gloves at all. Yeah, I guess there's no gloves around. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we'll get that off of there in a second once it cools down a bit. And then we got our tool out. Like I said, I don't know. You probably could reuse that bearing. It wasn't too much force we put on it, but you're really not supposed to put any side of the bearing up. So we'll heat this side up a little bit. It should go quicker because some of that heat actually absorbed through. Sure. Let's see where we're starting at. Yeah, we're starting at about 60 oh, yeah, on this one, so yeah. shouldn't take quite as long. So this is gonna can you see in there? Yep. This is going to get wedged in there. That's why we have to put that on a hard surface because I'm actually going to wedge this piece and that piece. And then I can stand the wheel up. Okay, we got the bearing out. Nice. And now we are ready for the new ones. Uh, if you look on a bearing, it has a little part number on it. This one is what, 6005RS. Make sure this one's the same. Yeah, 6005RS. So that should be the uh, close to the same part number on our ceramic bearings. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Off here to get our tool out. Just a little vice. go across that slot because you don't want it to get bigger. You want it to stay the size it is and just tap that. There it is. Takes. So we're going to start with the side that didn't, doesn't have the snap ring in it again. It has a seat for the bearing so we'll know when it's completely seated. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, we're going to try not to use any force, but for in case we need to, we're going to have a very driver kit close by, just for in case we need, we need a little tap to seat it, so that one's too big, that one fits in there, and you want to find one that's hopefully going to push on the outside edge of the bearing. If you absolutely have to apply force, that's okay. where you want it to go. So this one has a little handle so you can, if we need to push on it or tap it, we'll be ready to go because we're going to have to do all this kind of quick because we're heat dealing with hot and cold. Um, I think that we are ready to do it. Warm this guy back up. Probably take it up to about uh, 90, 95 this time so I got time to run to the freezer. Hopefully it's got chilled enough. We should be able to just place it right in there. Look, Look at that. Nice. No uh, contact necessary. All right, we're nearing back down to room temperature, 60 degrees or so, I can touch it. So we can flip it over. Important, don't forget your spacer because okay. then you have to pull the bearing out. And like I said, you really wanna try avoiding contact on your bearing, especially the ceramic one. So this just sits in there. 
try to center it as good as possible. It makes it easier to get your axle through if you center it. Okay. So now we need to heat this side up. We're going to go for that same 100 because that works so well. Yep. Again, I'm just heating this flange. I don't want to get too much heat on the carbon fiber. Up to our 100 number. So I'm going to go for my jog again. Yep, to the freezer. Freezer. Air bearing. Nice. There you go. Slid right in. Axle spacer stayed nice and centered. And this side had that snap ring. So we're going to use our snap ring pliers to reinstall it. That way we're 100% sure our bearing's seated all the way. And you can see that fit right into the groove so we know our bearings are in all the way and retained. Nice. And we've even gone and upgraded our BST wheels. Nice. So those bearings, they didn't require any lube or anything, Zach? No. Okay. They, they're, it's a sealed bearing. That's what gotcha. this uh, blue plastic ring is. Yep. If you were to pop it off, you could see the actual balls inside, and that's what's ceramic on this. That's why it's a semi-ceramic bearing. Because this is steel, this is steel, those are called the races. Mm -hmm. And then the balls inside are what allow this to rotate like this. Yep. And on this bearing, those balls are steel and packed with a the grease. These are uh, ceramic and packed with a different kind of grease. Very nice. For less resistance. But this is a really smooth bearing. You can feel it yourself if you want. Spin the, spin the outside. Yeah. So that will wrap up episode one of season three of the new bike build series where Zach just installed amazing RS10 tires onto the front wheel, BST wheel, onto the 2018 S1000RR and he replaced the stock steel bearings in those wheels with ceramic bearings. In the next episode we will install Brembo brake rotors onto the bike and get that all wrapped up. So, if you've missed any of the episodes from the previous two seasons of the New Bike Build series, click on the card floating right up there, and you can check out those episodes. So go ahead, if you, if you like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe. New videos are always uploaded to the channel. Stay tuned for more. We'll catch you next time on the New Bike Build series.